For generations, the Atlantic Ocean has been both a blessing and a curse for Lagos, Nigeria. Its waves carried trade, wealth, and opportunity to Nigeria's bustling economic capital. But the same waters also carved away at its shoreline, year after year swallowing land, homes, and entire communities. At Bar Beach, a once famous stretch of golden sand, the sea advanced relentlessly, eroding up to 30 meters of coastline annually. By the early 2000s, Lagos faced a stark reality. Without drastic intervention, much of its prized Victoria Island risked being lost to the ocean. Out of this looming disaster came an idea so bold it seemed impossible. What if, instead of retreating from the sea, Lagos could build into it? What if a modern city, designed to rival Dubai and Singapore, could rise from reclaimed land, shielded by a colossal seawall strong enough to tame the Atlantic? Today, that vision is becoming reality in the form of a megacity rising from the waves, promising to house thousands of residents, attract global businesses, and forever change Nigeria's coastline. It is one of the most ambitious urban experiments the world has ever seen. Today, let's delve into Nigeria's $6 billion Echo Atlantic City. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Lagos, home to more than 20 million people, is Nigeria's beating economic heart, producing over a quarter of the nation's GDP. Yet the city is defined as much by its struggles as by its vibrancy. Congested roads trap commuters for hours each day. Housing shortages have pushed millions into sprawling informal settlements. Most alarming of all, flooding has become routine, with entire neighborhoods submerged during heavy rains. The crisis at Bar Beach is emblematic. For decades, waves advanced steadily inland, eroding the coastline at a rate of up to 30 meters annually. Entire stretches of road disappeared, hotels and businesses were destroyed, and every rainy season brought fresh misery. By the early 2000s, it was clear that simple seawalls would not suffice. A more radical solution was needed, one that could defend Lagos while also creating new space for the city's relentless growth. The Lagos state government, working with the Shiguri Group's South Energy X Nigeria Limited, proposed an audacious plan. They would build a massive seawall strong enough to tame the Atlantic, then dredge millions of tons of sand to reclaim land behind it. On this reclaimed land would rise a city that could stand shoulder to shoulder with the world's most modern metropolises, the Echo Atlantic City. From the outset, Echo Atlantic City was designed to be more than just another Lagos neighborhood. It would be a self-sustaining city with its own infrastructure, able to function independently of the often overburdened systems on the mainland. The master plan, developed by Dar Alhandasa, envisioned wide boulevards, high-rise office towers, modern residential complexes, waterfront promenades, and green spaces spread across 10 square kilometers of reclaimed land. The new city was divided into districts with distinct purposes. A financial district would serve as the heart of West African banking and commerce, attracting global corporations. Residential areas would provide luxury apartments with views of the ocean. Marinas would line the waterfront, creating a lifestyle of leisure and exclusivity. The master plan also incorporates landscaped green areas, providing open space and relief within the dense urban fabric. The crown jewel of the entire development is the Great Wall of Lagos, the massive 8.5-kilometer seawall built to shield both the new city and much of Victoria Island from storm surges. Constructed from specially designed concrete blocks interlocked like puzzle pieces, the wall is engineered to absorb the Atlantic's fury and withstand waves that strike only once in a hundred years. Behind it lies not only the land reclaimed from the sea, but also the promise of a safer Lagos. Echo Atlantic's design captures the scale of Nigeria's global ambition. The city's skyline is already taking shape with the Echo Pearl Towers, a cluster of five high-rises in white, aqua, champagne, black, and indigo, each designed to become a landmark on the reclaimed coast. Nearby, the Alpha One office tower is rising as a centerpiece of the financial district, intended to attract multinational corporations and banks. On the waterfront, the Azuri Peninsula has become one of the project's most high-profile developments, 
with its trio of luxury towers, including Azuri One, the tallest residential building in West Africa, offering penthouses, private marinas, and sweeping ocean views. The Echo Energy Estate adds another dimension, presenting a mix of modern villas and apartments in a secure, gated environment. Planned leisure attractions, such as the Hakuna Matata theme park, further highlight the city's ambition to blend business, lifestyle, and recreation. What sets the city apart, however, is its infrastructure independence. Unlike the rest of Lagos, where power outages and unreliable water are routine, Echo Atlantic promises uninterrupted electricity from dedicated plants, treated water from its own facilities, and high-speed fiber-optic internet built into the master plan. Roads and boulevards are designed with underground drainage to eliminate the paralyzing floods that plague much of the city. The physical creation of Echo Atlantic began in 2009 with the dredging of sand from the Atlantic seabed. By 2023, more than 140 million cubic meters of sand have been pumped onto the site to raise the reclaimed land well above sea level, creating a secure foundation against flooding. The reclamation demanded round-the-clock dredging and a vast network of pipelines and trucks to move sand on an unprecedented scale. Once the land was in place, attention shifted to the city's first line of defense, the Great Wall of Lagos. Designed by Danish coastal engineering firm DHI, the seawall stretches 8.5 kilometers and is built from acropode units, specially shaped 5-ton concrete blocks that interlock without the use of mortar. Their sheer weight, combined with their unique geometry, allows them to absorb and dissipate the ocean's energy, flexing slightly under the force of waves rather than breaking apart. Reinforced with granite sourced from quarries across Nigeria, the wall has been engineered to withstand even once-in-a-century storms. With protection secured, construction has progressed in phases. Boulevards and underground utility corridors came first, followed by residential towers, marinas, and commercial landmarks such as the Azuri Peninsula, the Alpha One Office Tower, and the Echo Pearl Towers, which now dominate the skyline. Echo Atlantic carries a projected cost of about $6 billion, though delays and rising expenses may push this figure higher. The project is structured as a public-private partnership. The Lagos state government provides regulatory backing, while most financing comes from the Chaguri Group through South Energy X Nigeria Limited, supplemented by international banks and private investors funding individual developments. Construction began in 2009 and has advanced in phases. The Great Wall of Lagos is complete, 80% of land reclamation is completed, and landmark projects like the Echo Pearl Towers and Azuri Peninsula are already occupied. Yet the fully realized city, with its skyline of skyscrapers and bustling financial hub, remains at least a decade away. From its earliest days, Echo Atlantic has stirred as much debate as it has admiration. Critics point first to inequality. With property prices aimed squarely at the wealthy, many argue the city is far beyond the reach of ordinary Nigerians. In a metropolis where millions live in poverty and informal settlements, the gleaming towers of Echo Atlantic can feel like a world apart. Environmental concerns have also shadowed the project. By altering the natural flow of the ocean, the Great Wall of Lagos may worsen erosion and flooding in nearby communities such as Lekki and Ajar. Traditional fishing groups who once worked at Bar Beach have been displaced, losing both land and livelihood. Skeptics also question whether Nigeria's volatile economy can support a luxury district and international banking hub over the long term. Supporters counter that the benefits are transformational. The seawall offers unprecedented protection, shielding both Echo Atlantic and Victoria Island from devastating floods. The project has already generated thousands of construction jobs and promises to anchor Lagos as a financial center for West Africa. With new housing, marinas, hotels, and modern infrastructure, it could ease congestion, attract global investment, and elevate Nigeria's image as a rising urban power. As of 2025, Echo Atlantic is still a work in progress, but its outline is unmistakable. Land has been reclaimed, the seawall is secure, 
and the first towers are already populated. If the project succeeds in attracting the scale of investment its planners envision, Lagos could emerge as one of the great global cities of the 21st century, its financial district rivaling Johannesburg, Nairobi, or even Dubai. Yet the ultimate fate of Echo Atlantic will depend on whether it can integrate with Lagos rather than stand apart from it. If it becomes an enclave for the rich, while millions outside struggle with flooding and poverty, it risks deepening inequality. If, however, it serves as a catalyst for broader development and resilience, it could transform not only Lagos, but also perceptions of Africa's urban future. For now, the experiment continues. Where once the Atlantic devoured the land, a new skyline rises. Echo Atlantic remains both a bold defense against nature and a glittering bet on Nigeria's destiny.